Hey guys. Happy Martin Luther King Day. A lot of you got to be off from work today in honor of Martin Luther King. I have been to the eye doctor today. It's one of those unexpected doctor visits. But my vision has been very blurred the last several weeks, probably maybe even six weeks. And it just really kind of got me worried. Um, I hate to say this, but I still have the headache. This is about eight days now. I've done this before. I did this when I had the brain bleed, but it was different, okay? So, I mean, the enemy's been trying to get in my mind with that, but I don't believe it's that. Um, a lot of it's in my neck, which it was at that time too. So, um, I don't know. I have to call the doctor on the next day or so if it doesn't ease up. It kind of wanes a little bit sometimes, and um, but then it comes back with force. So. But anyway, it is 33 degrees. It is cold. <laughs> and, but look how beautiful the sun is. But I'm telling you, the wind will cut through you. It is so cold. It is cold, cold. Now, last week we were in the 70s. Is it any wonder when you live in crazy temperatures like this that your sinuses and all are not crazy? The eye doctor was talking to me because he knew I'd had the brain bleed and he had said, you know, do you think it's a sinus headache? And I said, no, because it goes all into my neck and everything too. And um, it's just, I'm sick of it. <laughs> I had a busy day yesterday. We had church yesterday morning. I'd fixed a punch bowl cake the night before and took it to church early and put it in the refrigerator and um, had church, got to come home for about an hour, and then went to a bridal tea of one of my young ladies that's been in my Bible study for a long time, and then had mentoring from four to 6.30. <laughs> okay, and then when the headache gets really, really bad, I have some Tramadol that they have given me that I will take. Well, hmm, let's not do that again. Because I've been up since 2 o'clock scratching and clawing. Can't take anything for pain, hardly. Just does not jihaw with me. I've got supper down here on the floor. Sun's probably going to be all bad here. Just a minute. Of course it is. Look at that. Oh, that's good. It's highlighting my nose. Oh, yeah. Afternoon sun's going to kill me all the way home. So, it's either talk to y'all or don't talk or just let the sun be in my face. So we're just gonna let the sun be there. All right, little cars, y'all stop. I don't like that little intersection. Uh, I went by and got Panera for us. What in the world? A Rubbermaid bucket, maybe? Hmm. <laughs> One never knows what they're gonna find. I'm still itching, sorry. I just cannot take pain medication. And tramadol is supposed to be not very strong. But I started, I, I don't think I ever went to a sound sleep. I just remember started rubbing my arms and my legs kind of all over my body and then it started itching. And then my face was itching like crazy. And so I got up at two o'clock. Sorry guys, this is gonna be horrible recording. But, um, just wanted to check in with y'all. I've been sitting down and lining up some things that I'm gonna do for YouTube. You're gonna see me kind of itching, <laughs> rubbing my face. It's, it's just kind of itchy to where I kind of rub it, so. But we, um, we had our women's launch at church last Sunday night where everybody signs up for what small groups they wanna be in. And I'm not sure if I had told y'all this, but I had asked, if they could get by without my Thursday night class this semester, I'd like to take this semester off. Um, my boys will be playing ball 
And I would really like to concentrate more on YouTube, you know, the lessons that I'm gonna put on YouTube. And then I'd like to teach it again in the fall. And so I think that's gonna work out. Now we got Blair and Son. So I, while I was at the eye doctor, I was writing down some ideas. So let me say this. I know some of you have said some topics before and I may or may not have taught on them. But if you got a topic that you want me to teach on, let me know and I'll see, I'll try to get to that. Um, the reason I don't get on here and throw up something, not throw up, but throw up something on YouTube is that when I teach, now I mean I can talk about the Lord and, and I have a lot of videos where I just talk about Him and things that have happened, you know. But when I really label something a teaching lesson, I want to have something prepared to teach y'all. I don't want to just get on there and throw something up and call it a teaching lesson. I want to have scriptures to back it up. So therefore, it takes preparation time. John and I got down in the basement today. Um, I've told him I want to clear me out a spot, get me a desk and a working space so that uh, we've just got some furniture down there that needs to go. I've, get, I've got my old, old, old china cabinet uh, from years ago, 70s, <laughs> that I thought and actually thought at one time she might use it, but she don't, just the style of it, she doesn't. So I've given it to another girl, so she's got to come get it. And then I've got a table and some chairs and then another chair and look, I've tried to give them to some people, and if they don't want them, I'm fixing to take them to the thrift store. John's fixing to. But I wanted to get my basement. He said, you won't come down here. And I said, I will because I need a place to land to really study where I can spread out my study materials, uh, spread out my Bibles, and all that kind of stuff. So I said, I will too. Let's get it done. So he's, he's on board with me now about it. And um, it is kind of hard for me to go to the basement and do stuff because I just love being upstairs. And, um, but I know that if I will make it comfortable and make it pleasing to the eye, I just ordered me some lights to use for when I'm recording Bible lessons to get the lighting better on my face and everything, just overall more uh, pleasing. And so I, those should be in the next day or so, and I could set them up down there and leave them. I wouldn't have to take them down all the time. So I'm trying to get more organized with you two because I, I, you people inspire me so much. You tell me over and over and over, I'm talking about all of you, different ones of you, how much you enjoy my teaching and how God uses it and, you know, it's just like you're somewhere at this point in your life and something I teach or something I share with you is exactly what you need to hear that day. And see, that's the way God works. That's the way God works. And I want to be obedient. And because obedience, we're going to talk about obedience. That's one of the topics too, because obedience brings along blessings in your lives. And we've been studying about the favor of God at church, and I want to talk to y'all about the favor of God for 2020. So we've got a lot of good ideas. Um, after what I've just been through the last few weeks, I want to talk to you about forgiveness because I've had to revisit that. And forgiveness is hard, but forgiveness is not for the other person at all. I mean, sometimes it does work that it relieves them but sometimes, and most of the times, forgiveness is for you. I have seen that firsthand in my life in the past. It is for you. And if they don't accept it, it would be better if they did. It'd be so much better for everybody involved. But if they don't, it still goes forth when you release forgiveness. So we're going to be talking about that. So. But I went to the eye doctor today. I've been having a very difficult time seeing in the distance. Everything is just blurred. And I know that I am forming cataracts. He had told me that back in July when I got my glasses. And so I thought, well, have they gotten that much worse? I mean, like at church, which you know, 
Church lighting is kind of funky anyway. You've got that dim lit, it's not bright lighting. But I know who's up on the stage and we sit seven rows back and I know who's on the stage, but I really can't make out their face sharp and that drives me crazy. So they did a very thorough checking today, especially along with the headache and everything. And I will be calling my medical doctor in the next day or so. I've got a doctor's appointment with mother Thursday. I gotta keep the boys Friday. So it's just like the week, you know, gets away. It's crazy. But if I can't get some relief, I've got some magnesium, a prescription of magnesium that's still good that they gave me when I was in the hospital. Um, well, I've had it refilled and um, I'm gonna go take some of that tonight because it's kind of been at its worst today. So y'all just keep the prayers coming. Thank y'all so much for praying for me. Um, but today he said that one, the cataract on the left eye had changed, but still not to the point it should be removed. Pressure in my eyes was great, no problem there. He just said my eyes were excessively dry. And he said, Miss Light, you're really gonna have to work on this. He said, eye drops when you get up in the morning, eye drops when you take your makeup off. I said, I'm already doing that. So I bought eye drops from him, which is supposed to be better than what I'm using. Of course, more expensive. And then I'm starting on a fish oil vitamin. He said, they're big. He said, but you can't taste them. And he said, but that was like $35. I walked out of there $206 later. <sighs> but guys, God only gives you these two eyes. You gotta take care of them. So, he just said excessively dry eyes. So, he put stents. Yes, it's as exciting as it sounds. Put stents into my tear ducts. He tried to, he said, I believe we'll try to put a larger size in this time than we did. I had him put in about two years ago. Uh, he couldn't get the larger size in. <laughs> uh. Uh, <laughs> that'd make a horrible thumbnail, wouldn't it? <laughs> uh, so he said, let's go back down to point two. And I was like, yes, let's. <laughs> let's. Because <laughs> I can feel that. And I know my little tear duct is not big and you're trying to force something down it. It didn't hurt. It was a little uncomfortable. That's the time that I'm like, just a little talk with Jesus. Tell him all about our problems. He will hear our faith. You know, I'm just like sucking myself out. <laughs> you really are not gouging something down into my tear ducts, are you? <laughs> but he was. Uh, but did you know, and what that does, the stance, um, it closes the tear ducts up a little bit so that moisture stays in my eyes longer if i if i heard him right i believe that's what he's and did you know within three minutes i could tell the difference in my eyes they felt lubricated and they felt like oh we're we're just we're going around and it doesn't feel too bad <laughs> and he said you know and i told him that when i have the chronic fatigue that it really shows up in my eyes and my eyes get so tired he said they're, they're having to work double time because there's no moisture in them. So I've got to really be proactive with this for my eyes. And of course, dry eyes accommodate most of the time autoimmune diseases. So, but God can heal it just like that. And I'm asking him to, I'm trusting him to. He may not ever do it, but I believe he can. And I'm gonna keep asking him. We don't never know. So, stents in the eyes, vitamins, eye drops, $206 later. And part of that was because she said I met my deductible by paying that today. So, I'm going to check on some vision insurance that they've got. Because, don't gasp and fall out. I don't know how much y'all pay for y'all's glasses. But these were $1,000. And they're coach, and it's not because the frames were high. 
the frames really weren't that bad. It's all the stuff I have in the lens. Um, so a lot of stuff, but look, I only get new glasses every three or four years. There again, the only two eyes that God gave me. When you divide that up, I'll take that. When you get put a daily cost on that, I don't know what that would be. Y'all would have to tell me. Let's just say four years, because I wore the last ones four years. So four years divided however many days that would be. Um, cost per day is worth it to be able to see and everything, so. But I just wanted to come on here and touch base with y'all to tell you that I am doing some planning. Um, oh, you hear some stuff sliding around back there? Oh, the sun is awful. I did pick up a few things at Hobby Lobby afterwards to put on my shelves. I bet every one of you that has taken down your Christmas has redecorated your house. I haven't. <laughs> I still got stuff just sitting around. <laughs> oh, I haven't. <laughs> we do such a massive undertaking of decorating at Christmas. And so I'm ready to get everything. It's been cleaned. The floors are cleaned. Everything's been dusted. It's just like nothing's really decorated. Like my cabinets where I put all my Santas. It's just kind of there's a few things sitting up there. Some stuff sitting on the counter. They're kind of mostly naked so and I know that y'all all have your house just in perfect order good for y'all because <laughs> I don't oh me I was just thinking today I don't remember where I was when Martin Luther King was assassinated and y'all will have to correct me if I'm wrong. Was it 65? I remember exactly where I was when JFK, when our president was assassinated. I'm gonna tell my age here. I think that was 1963, I think. But I was in the second grade. And I remember my teacher going out. We had old timey doors and there was a window up higher. You couldn't see all of her outside, but I saw her out in the hall with our third grade teacher there, a little small Southern school. And I remember her coming back in crying. And I was like, and she was a mean teacher. And I was like, why is she crying? What in the world has happened? And she went and sat at her desk and tried to dry her tears and everything. And, and then she told us, she said, boys and girls, the president of the United States has been killed. And we were all so upset. But, um, you know, we just didn't have mass killings and all the crazy stuff that we hear about now. And of course, we didn't have social media. But I was just wondering today how different the world would have been if those two young men had not been assassinated. Martin Luther King, who was, I imagine, still the greatest civil rights leader that we've ever had, and John F. Kennedy, who was a go-getter. And I just wonder what, how different the world would be. Just wonder what things would have happened. You know, it's just like when we take the life of a young person, you never know what that young person could have done. And that both men were very young when they were killed. I'm thankful that I had a chance at life. I'm thankful that my mother had me. My girlfriend, oh, this lighting's horrible. Oh, my girlfriend was always so much braver than me going up. She had what we would call here a smart mouth. <laughs> and I didn't. <laughs> my mama, y'all know her. She put the fear of God in me. Put the fear of God in me. Or maybe it was the fear of Faye. It might have been the fear of faith. But if I'd said some of the things that my friend Robin used to say to her mama, she, her and her mother would get into it. My, me and my mother never fussed. We just, we just didn't. I was not a fussy type and she didn't, you know, we just didn't. 
but my girlfriend would get into arguments with her mother and they'd be mouthing back and forth and she'd say, I didn't ask to be born. I was like, oh my gosh. I would have no teeth left in my head if I said that to my mother. <laughs> oh gosh, you used to tell, I used to tell her, I said, oh, you just better be glad you got your mama and I got my mama. Cause my mama would knock your teeth out for saying that. <laughs> I didn't ask to be born. <laughs> no, and she's a very decent, God-loving, God-fearing woman now. <laughs> so, <laughs> oh, we were like, uh, polar opposites, and, uh, but we loved each other and always had a good time and we're still good friends, but anyway, I just wanted to come on here and chit chat with y'all a little bit today. I'm probably about three or four miles from home now and the sun is just, y'all gonna see all shades of me. It's just, I mean, you know, it's just what you get when you, when you video in the afternoon, but I'm about to starve. I, um, I ate breakfast and then I didn't eat lunch. And so we're doing our fast and I've been fasting breakfast, but I didn't this morning, nor did I get to have my quiet time like I wanted uh, because I've been up since two. Um, I might've dozed a little bit, so my head's itching just talking about it. <laughs> but anyway, no more uh, tramadol for me. I'm throwing that stuff in the garbage. And uh, so hopefully I can get in bed early tonight. And uh, one of uh, one of my good friends on here, and she's a subscriber, and she lives in Texas. And she texted me last night, and she, she said, um, she said, I'm sorry to uh, write you so late, and it was 9:30. And I'm like, girlfriend, that's not late. <laughs> Many of you know. Uh, Dana, my friend in Washington State, I was uh, riding her the other night, like at midnight. She said, girl, it's late where you live. What are you doing? What are you doing? So I'm, I'm a late bird sometimes. That's, hey, that's the beauty of the retired life. Then if you want to sleep till eight or nine o'clock the next morning, you can do that, right? That's what you get. That's what you get to do when you retire. Well, I'm trying to think if there's anything else I didn't tell you. I was telling you about the weekend. Church was awesome yesterday. Mm, awesome. Um, preaching was just awesome. Mentoring yesterday evening was just awesome. I've learned so much already in the mentoring. And I went into that class dragging my feet and screaming that I didn't want to. But God knew I needed it. He knew I needed it, and I did. So I've had to apologize to Pastor Jamie. I told her, I said, I did not want to take this class. You know I didn't, and now I love it. So anyway, I'm gonna work on some lessons. I'm hoping I really get to work on some tomorrow um, since I'm babysitting Friday and taking Mother Thursday. So just be on the lookout. I love you guys so much. I told John the other night there are times and situations when y'all tell me things and say things that just blesses me so much. Just to know that God is using the vehicle of YouTube to minister to y'all and that he's allowing me to be a part of it just kind of blows my mind. It just makes me feel unworthy to do so, but yet so honored to be able to be a part of it. So I truly, truly thank y'all from the bottom of my heart. I don't take it for granted. And I think this is a um, special season in my life that I'm being honored to do that. So I just want y'all to know that. So fix and turn right back into the sun. I love you. Remember John 10, 10 says, that the enemy comes to steal, kill, and destroy, but God says, I come, that you can have life and have it more abundantly. And I pray abundant life over every one of you that watches this video. Abundant life. Be blessed in the name of Jesus. Love y'all. Bye.